What up, Matthew? Mr. Swimbait, how's it going? Oh, Nathan. Been tearing them up today, Nathan? Out whacking the bass. Hey, John. How's it going, man? <clears throat> Rocco. Matthew's fishing an online swim bait tournament. What up, Gary? The little B, how's it going? Adam, Roger, Booster, how's it going, guys? Brian from Oregon. We got our one Oregonian on the line. Kick your bass, country boy, creek fishing. How's it going? What is new? Looks like Nathan's been tearing them up, he says. Crushing them. I went out a little bit yesterday, a few hours, and caught about 10. Nothing uh, nothing uh, to write home about. Tom, Frankie, Roger, how's it going? First full moon in August. Big bites, especially if you're fishing at night. Any of you guys fish at nighttime, go out after dark and stay out all night? I got a buddy, my buddy Joe fished a tournament yesterday, and then he fished a night tournament last night. I don't know how he did. I haven't heard. Roger caught his first glide bait fish. Cool. Man, everybody's killing them. Kick your bass, wrecked them today. Wow, that's sweet. Kick your bass, did you stay around here or did you go down south somewhere? Monday, four bass, possibly a PB. Nice. Bass, bluegill, and muskie. That's a pretty good week. Thunderstorms in northern New York pushed a nice bag of walleye onto my lure. Perfect. I like that prefrontal flurry. Uh, looks like the whole Midwest is having uh, a lot of storms tonight and tomorrow. It's going to miss us, but it's going to kind of hit St. Louis and move to the east. Gary, our heat index tomorrow is supposed to be 109, 109, so probably not going to be doing any fishing tomorrow. I got to work anyway, but at the end of the day, pff, that's the hottest part of the day. You can forget it. Country boy creek fishing kicked butt yesterday on a new lake in North Carolina, 11 fish in three hours. Very nice. Nothing wrong with fishing in storms as long as you're uh, staying away from the lightning. Yeah, it's going to be so hot here tomorrow. Nathan throwing the jabber jaw. Ended up catching 20 bass in a row. She Jabber jaw. I don't have a jabber jaw. I've got my uh, six cents... Uh, 
knockoff of the jabber jaw but i don't have a jabber jaw i've heard a lot of good things about that thing old my buddy steve at the get your fish on says that jabber jaws the real deal what up joseph did you get your jewel sub before x did you get your jewel sub before x i'm not sure what you're talking about there are you talking about yeah i got my i got my jewel baits box and i've already done the video and i'll probably put it out tomorrow uh it was kind of a themed football jig shaky head box this month a lot of football jigs they had some finesse football jigs some beefy football jigs and uh, the same for the shaky heads. That's a good box. The jewel box is called Fish Tools. Fish Tools. Man, nice box if you like jigs. Jewel baits focuses mostly on jigs. That's usually what you get in most of the box. <laughs> I'm glad you like them, Joseph. If you don't like jigs, you're not going to like the jewel boxes. <laughs> uh, what up, Fisherman83? Right on to little B. Hit that like button. Always helps, man. Yeah, give it a try, Adam. You, uh, you will enjoy it. And you don't have to fish a football jig out deep. You can for sure, but you can fish football jigs shallow as well. You can fish them from the bank. You can fish them from a boat. They work really good in rock. <laughs> so give the football jig a try. You will probably like it. Um, I'm uh, speaking of jigs, my name that baits game tonight is going to be on trailers, jig trailers, chatterbait trailers, spinnerbait trailers. So uh, start thinking about baits that uh, you might use as a trailer or that I might use as a trailer, and. Uh, Start thinking about that for the game tonight. Yeah, Aaron Martins made the cut. That was sweet. Dude, Aaron Martins is going through some tough, tough, tough stuff. <laughs> if you guys don't follow professional fishing, Aaron Martins is just a dominant uh, professional angler, but he got a brain tumor a few years ago, and it's really kicking his butt. He cannot drive now, so in order to fish tournaments, he has to have a driver, someone that can drive the boat for him. And his vision is all messed up, and his memory's messed up. <clears throat> I could not believe it. I heard today him talking on uh, YouTube, watching or something, uh, about <clears throat> his tournament out at Champlain, and he was telling, he was saying that some of the guys were reminding him how to tie a drop shot because he'd forgotten. I mean, he was a master at that, a master drop shotter, a master fisherman in general. He was so, he was like a student of bass fishing. He was like a bass professor. He was so intelligent when it came to, he was kind of like a modern day Rick Clun, really into the details and to hear him say something like, uh, I couldn't remember how to fish a drop shot. Oh, man, that poor guy. What he must be going through. Jeez, I can't even, I can't even imagine it. Uh, it's just crazy. Absolutely crazy. So I really hope Mayor Aaron pulls through. Man, he's just such a good guy. I've fished a few tournaments that he fished in. Um, one was at Lake St. Clair. Uh, that dude is intense, man. He is just an intense angler.
Yeah, I don't know. He just had that brain tumor, Matthew, and it and it really messed messed him up. And uh, it's not he's not out of the woods yet. And he's got such an amazing attitude. He's so optimistic. Kick your bass, that bull gill. I told you, man. You you uh, if you guys have not tried the Mike Buka bullgill or baby bullgill if you don't want to spend a lot of money you can get the babies from uh carl's carl sells them over at catch co you can get them in a lot of places those things flat out catch fish man they are so fun excellent excellent bait <laughs> yeah kyle yeah, he he would do he did fish team tournaments with his mom some. He's a super unique guy. The other thing that kind of just blows your mind is he 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 was probably the healthiest guy on the on the pros circuit. He was always eating, you know, fresh fruits and vegetables and he was really 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 into organic foods and uh, I don't think he was a vegetarian, but he was close, man. He was he was just super super healthy. He he used to run, and uh, super unique cat. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Aaron Martins is one of the most unique guys you'll ever meet on the tour. Uh, but he was so healthy, and then he gets his brain tumor. It blew my mind because he's. <laughs> He's definitely, he doesn't fit the profile of someone who would get sick. Yeah, you're right, Kyle. Always running, man. In fact, uh, that tournament that I fished at uh, at uh, St. Clair that he was on, I passed him because he was... Uh, he was late. He was late. He was late for the. Uh, he was late for the check-in meeting, and uh, you know he was always running, 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 running. He just was that kind of person. Still is, I would assume. Except now somebody else has to run him because he can't even drive. Can't even drive his own boat. Yeah, the bull shad's pretty sweet. What color do you throw, Country Boy Creek Fishing? <coughs> what color of the bull shad do you like? <clears throat> yeah, I don't know, Nathan. I don't know a lot of anglers that have tumors, but you might be right. Baby bass, crappy, gold bull shad. Yeah, I like that color too. I've got a white one as well that's just... I mean, he might be sitting up here. Yeah. Here's one. Yes. Nothing fancy, just white. Buka, baby. That's the deal. What up, Nick? Any comparisons between bull shad and contender? Matthew may want to take that one. Let's see. Da, 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 da. So yeah, I went out. Uh, I, I went out yesterday and I fished only one lure because I got in a an order from Tackle Warehouse. I'm gonna put a video on that. One of the things I got. Let's see if I got it still over here. One of the things I got was the new 
Booyah Mobster Swim Jig that Chris Jones uh, fished during the Classic. Yeah, how's it going? And uh, I wanted to try fishing it without any other, uh, you know, only it, just it, to force myself to fish with it. So I took it out and fished with it for about half a day. And uh, it's a nice, nice swim jig. I like the colors. It has a very unique head shape on it. I wish I'd left one sitting out here so I could show you guys. Uh, anyway, it has a um, it has a very unique head. They call it a mouse head, and then they modified the mouse head. But it's uh, it's got a shape <laughs> that helps it come through cover really, really well. Yeah, John, I did see that. I'm excited about about that. Uncle Josh, pork. I like pork. I stocked up on it before they went out of business, or right when I heard they were going out of business, so I've got a lot of it. But uh, it's good to hear that they are back. Um, I like pork, especially in cold water. But the uh, Mobster Swim Jig really comes through cover well. It uh, it doesn't turn over, you know, so it swims straight and true really nicely. And uh, I didn't lose really any fish on it. It uh, it really, uh, the fish really, really just inhaled it. And uh, the hook sets were great on it. No problem with the hook set on that Booyah Mobster swim jig. So if you're looking for a swim jig, you may want to check those out because I think they're the real deal. I really like them. Um, I'm going to be fishing a tournament up in uh, Wisconsin here in a, how long? Probably in a couple of months. And uh, I plan on throwing that swim jig around. There's a lot of grass up there at uh, on the Missouri Mississippi River in Wisconsin. Kyle throwing down, getting the old clash, clash in the, in the tackle box, the tiny and the nine. Well, you need to be talking to, uh, Matthew here on the channel because Matthew, he's becoming a clash collector. He just sent me a picture of a new color. He just bought this week. And I don't know how many Matthew, how many clashes, and tiny clashes do you have now? But Matthew is serious about the clash and tiny clash. Yeah, you're right, David. I'm going to lacrosse. Going to lacrosse. I was kind of surprised because when I watched the videos with Chris Jones, he made it sound like that Booyah jig is beefy. And it's way finessier than I thought. It, it does have a pretty stout hook on it, but it's not super stout. And it's pretty compact. It's not nearly as big as I thought it would be. And I kind of like that. I'm not uh, a huge fan of of really big beefy swim jigs, although Steve Kennedy throws a big beefy swim jig, that DNL tackle swim jig. And uh, I've got several of those as well, but I I tend to like the smaller ones a little better. Check that out, Kyle. Matthew's got three tinies, three nines, a joker, a ghost, and two riser jacks. So he's definitely dropping some coin on the DRTs.
Definitely. What up, Simon? How's it going, man? Yeah, uh, you got to be careful, man. As I, as you can see behind me, it's easy to get carried away on this stuff. And uh, the reality is, although I, I probably, I probably sound hypocritical saying this, you can get carried away with this stuff, man. <laughs> you really can. You can only fish with one lure at a time, anyway. Uh, so I don't really recommend going too crazy on it until, until you really know what you like and what you're good at. Uh, just cause everybody's throwing the clash nine doesn't mean you'll like the clash nine. It doesn't mean it will fit your style of fishing or any of them, the Joker or the tiny or whatever. Not saying they're not great baits, they are, but I've definitely gotten out of control before and spent too much money on some of these baits uh, when the reality is some of them I may never get around to fishing. Yeah, you're right, Booster. This isn't even my tackle room. This is just my display area. My tackle room, let's see, I did an unboxing video. Uh, of the Monster Bass uh, multi-species bag today in my tackle room. I'm going to post that probably tonight. Go watch it and you'll see one of my tackle walls that's got a lot of my stuff on it. I'm kind of out of control. Now, Kyle, you know what? This actually, there's some truth to this. Think of it as an investment like golden guns. Believe it or not, Swim baits, at least right now, are not a bad investment because there's such a huge following. You can get your money back easily on a swim bait, a good swim bait, and you can really make money on some of them, like the Clash. You can actually make money on those baits. So the thing that you don't know is how long is it going to stay hot? How long is it going to maybe forever? But it's definitely more of an investment than you would think. Uh, I'm not telling you to uh, cash in your 401k and go buy a bunch of swim baits with the money. But uh, that there's definite resale. And there's resale on wiggle warts. These wiggle warts, they're all, they're all worth money. And... Uh, Sometimes they may be worth more than cash. You just never know. There's a lot of other things you could spend your money on that are a much bigger waste of money. If you go buy a regular crankbait, it's a fishing tool. That's it. You're not really ever going to sell it and make any money on it. But swim baits, you can fish with and you can almost always get your money back. So it's not a bad way to spend your money. <laughs> People are buying swim baits with Bitcoin. Hey. Whatever floats your boat, man. The, uh, you know what's funny is I got into Bitcoin right when it first started. And uh, I bought a pretty good little chunk of it. and uh, But I got out before it went crazy. I thought it was too risky. And I'm kicking myself now because if I'd kept that if I'd kept it, holy moly. Kyle, you're right. They are very pricey. <laughs> and they're not just pricey, they're super hard to get, too. And uh, I kind of get tired of chasing it. You know, it's just like, geez. They have these countdowns, and we're going to put something on for sale at 
8 p.m. on Friday night and you go and you, you know, you go and waste all your time trying to chase the bait and then you don't get one anyway. Steve's in the house. You didn't get an update, huh? I don't know. Uh, I think Kick Your Bass has had trouble with updates from from YouTube as well. I don't know what, what's going on with that, that kind of stuff. Well, glad Steve's here to join us. He was showing me some pretty cool baits. He gets cool stuff in all the time. He's supposed to be sending me a box full of awesome lures. And if I ever get it, I will uh, do an unboxing video of that with you for you guys as well. Texas Huntsman in the house. YouTube does not update me of Mr. Bass or get your fish on. Man, that's, a, that's not good. Not good at all. So, uh, <laughs> I've got my get your fish, or I mean, I've got my fish tools video coming out and my monster bass video coming out. Uh, as far as the game tonight, uh, this one here, Bass Baits Monthly, I'm giving away one of my Bass Baits Monthly boxes if you land on that tonight. And I'll show you real quick what's in it. In case uh, you're interested, there is this River to Sea Rover 98. This color is called Ghost Minnow. And there is this Reaction Innovations Hollow Bodied Frog. This is Gray Ghost. That is a sweet frog, I'm sure. And there's also this Yozuri Rattle and Vibe in Citrus Shad. Bass Bait Monthly Boxes, dudes. They're off the charts. Z-Man Finesse Bullets. Little Swim Bait Hooks. Some Z-Man TRD Craws in Mud Bug Color. I haven't gotten mine yet, Texas Huntsman. Uh, it's, sp it's supposed to be coming, though. Missile Baits Crawfather in Watermelon Red. The Z-Man Big TRD in the Deal Color. And a Bass Baits Monthly Sticker. This all can be yours! On the Mr. Bass Show, if you land right there tonight. That is what I'm giving away. Yeah, the deal is a nice, nice color. I, I use it quite a bit as well, David. Bullets with the Z-Man Fluke. <laughs> now, uh, you know, one thing that's always bugged me about Z-Man... I want to know what you guys, what's their deal here? Everything they do, they put a Z on the end. TRD, craw, Z. And uh, these bullets, the finesse bullets. So, I don't know, language interests me. Say, uh, so, how do you pronounce this? Do you guys call this the TRD Cross, or do you pronounce this the TRD Craw Z? Same with bullets. I say bullets. I say Cross. But uh, does Z Man expect you to say Z on the end? I don't know. It's part of their market marketing shtick, their marketing gimmick. They end everything in a Z. 
everybody's saying. You just say cross. That's probably right. Gary says that the Z equals an S. Okay. But see, Simon says I would say the Z on the end. I've heard guys do it both ways. That's why I'm asking. Because uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I didn't get it yet, Steve. It says in the mail, it says it's coming. But I haven't, I haven't seen it yet. Bass baits monthly. I haven't got it yet. Um. Yeah, I'm pretty picky about language. Like I was really good in English in school. I've always been really good in, in that, with that kind of stuff. Whenever something's spelled wrong, that really bugs the heck out of me. I don't mind you putting a Z on the end if that's your marketing deal. But for a guy like me who's super picky about language and English, I've always been like, how do you say that? A Z on the end does not work. That's not grammatically correct. How do I say that? Kyle says the Z is a big thing in Japan, huh? You're right, John. That's a good idea. Just watch one of their promotional videos, and I bet they say it the right way. Now, uh, my buddy Steve with Get Your Fish On, he's he's got a working relationship with Z-Man. He, he should know the answer. Uh, this is interesting you said this, Kick Your Bass. Uh, I, when I went to Alaska, the guys had... Uh, a bunch of P-line fluorocarbon as well. Actually, it was P-line mono. It wasn't fluoro. And it was breaking like crazy on all their lures. So I think they got a bad batch too. I've never really used P-line myself, so I don't know how good it is or bad. But uh, it's funny that you say that, and then literally last month I ran into the same problem up in Alaska. Fish <laughs> right on, Nathan. Fish Ubonics. Oh, you got it, buddy. That is the real deal. Don't look, don't look up how to pronounce New York towns. You will be so frustrated with the spelling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we've got a lot of uh, Native American uh, spellings of things around here. What model bass cat do I run? I have a cougar. Um, in fact, my cougar's getting a little old now. It's a 2009, and I'm thinking about selling it. Uh, I just hate to get rid of it. I love that boat. and uh, But the used market is so strong right now, I really think I should sell it. Because I could probably get what I paid for, believe it or not. Uh, yeah, I've been, I've been down South, you know, I was born and raised in, in Alabama, Gary. And, uh, I know all about those, those Indian names down there. I like them though. I like the native American Indian names for stuff. But you got to know how to pronounce them. That's the problem. Yeah, I really like my kayak to little B, but man, there's times when the bass boat pff, can't be beat. That's another thing. Knowing me, I'll sell that boat and then two months later, I'll want to go buy another one. And I think, dang, should I sell one so, and then put myself in that predicament? I did sell my Hobie, my Hobie Pro Angler. I think I told you guys that last week. 
But I had I had my Hobie Pro Angler 14 footer 360 awesome boat incredible boat. The only thing it was missing was a motor. And there's a few of these tournaments where you really need a motor. Most of the time you don't, but some of them you absolutely need a motor. So I kept thinking, you know, I either got to buy a motor for this thing or I need to buy a boat with a motor. And lo and behold, out of nowhere, I was at Shields and they had one come in like the day before I went there. They had the Old Town Sportsman Autopilot 120. And I thought, holy cow, how lucky can a guy get? You walk in and there's literally one, there's literally one sitting there. Yes, I saw Iconelli won out at, uh, he won the BASS kayak tournament out at, uh, up there in uh, the Chesapeake Bay. And I was scheduled to fish that tournament, uh, I decided not to fish it because I was kind of sick this week. Um, I'm pretty much over it now, but I just did, didn't want to take the risk. But Ike Canelli won his first pro kayak tournament yesterday. So that was pretty cool. Pretty cool. So in my opinion and everybody's opinion is just that it's an opinion and everybody's got one and it's worth whatever it's worth. But in my opinion, there are two kayaks that are the best two kayaks on the market. The Hobie pro angler and the old town autopilot. <coughs> so, I bought the autopilot and since I bought the autopilot, I thought, well, I'm just going to get rid of the Hobie Pro Angler. And so I sold it uh, just this week. Do you have enough room to fish off your autopilot? Man, it's got tons of room. It has tons of room. In fact, it's got more space for your feet than the Hobie had. And that's what I, I don't understand why people are saying that there's not a lot of space. There's tons of space. Now, what, what, what the autopilot does not have is it does not have any in the hatch storage. Hobie has this massive storage compartment in the bow, especially in the 14 footer. You can put a ton of stuff in there. The autopilot doesn't have that. It's got a tiny little hatch. You can't get anything in and out of that. Uh, there's no internal storage. But the deck where you stand and fish has got tons of room. And I think it's just perfect. So it doesn't, it, it's really not been a problem for me at all. Uh, I can tell you, country boy, you think the Hobie Pro Angler is a beast. That autopilot is just as much of a beast, man. It is it is very heavy. It's as, just as heavy as the Pro Angler. So that ain't going to... Going from one beast... All you're doing is going from one beast to the next. But I will tell you... There is nothing better than running that trolling motor and steering with your feet. You literally can run right along the bank, steer with your feet, and constantly fish. And you cannot do that with the Pro Angler. The Pro Angler, you've got to constantly be taking your hand off of your rod, turning that handle to make your adjustments as you go down the bank. It is a thing of beauty. The autopilot is incredible when it comes to moving, steering, and fishing all at the same time. There, I'm, I'm telling you, there's nothing better. There is nothing better. And I love my Hobie. I, I absolutely love it. I think it's one of the very best boats out there. But psh, the autopilot is better when it comes to fishability. It really is. The only thing where 
Hobie, I think, outshines the autopilot is in the grass. There is nothing better than those kick-up fins in the grass, man. They're just fantastic. So that I'm already missing. Uh, yeah, where do you keep your rain gear in the autopilot? You just put it in the back, you know, back behind your crate there. No big deal. <coughs> yes, David, I trailer my kayak. I did with my pro angler as well, but I've got an amazing trailer from On The Water Innovations. It is superb. It is amazing. It is incredible. It's called the Tourney Light, and it is frigging fantastic. I love that 120, Kyle, and I'm not a little guy. I'm a little over six feet, and I'm probably two, 210, 215. And uh, that boat, I fit great in that boat, and it and it holds well. The motor, I love, the thing I love about the motor is it's just built for the boat. It fits right in. It lifts in and out super easy. I really came close. In fact, I did buy the uh, Motor Guide XI3 to put on the on the bow of the boat, and it's just too bulky and cumbersome. And you know, guys say, "Well, you just put this plate and you got the bracket and you pull it out and the thing comes off." Yeah, it does, but nothing as simple as the uh, as the Old Town Autopilot. It is just it's a thing of beauty, man. It is a thing of beauty. But there are some disadvantages. One of the disadvantages is that auto that uh, trolling motor, four miles an hour max, and usually you're more like three and a half miles an hour. So you're not, it's not a speed demon by any means. Do I have electronics on any of my kayaks? Yes, I do. <laughs> I've got, and I and I don't know that I would recommend this one, uh, but I have the. Lowrance Live Side or whatever they call it, the Lowrance uh, HDS Live. I have a Lowrance HDS Live. I don't have the active target for it yet, but I'll probably end up buying it. Uh, the reason I have that is because I already have had Lowrance units on my bass boat, and I have a ghost trolling motor on my bass boat. So even though I wanted the Garmin, I thought to myself, does it make sense going with different units since I'm already a Lowrance guy? If I were starting from scratch, I probably wouldn't do the Lowrance thing. I'd probably do the Garmin thing. Um, but I've already gone down the road with the Lowrance thing, so that's kind. Of, I'm kind of. In, I already made that bed. That's what I'm in. Uh, I don't know that they're the best, but they're, they're decent. They're definitely decent. Yeah. The little B I admire someone who can paddle because paddling to me gets old, super fast, super fast. Yeah. All right. Um, let me, um, uh, why don't we do a question here? A spin to win question. Um, I'm going to go through the rules real quick in case somebody's new on here. All right. I ask questions uh, about uh, fishing, fishing tournaments, lures. I'm really starting. I'm doing a lot of this name that lure game right now. So that's probably what we'll do tonight. If you get the question correctly, you if you know the answer to the question, answer it in the comments. And if you're the first one to answer, you get selected to spin the wheel. We spin the wheel, <coughs> and depending upon what you land on is how you get your prizes. If you land on a one, you get one lure. Two, two lures. Land on Mr. Bass, you get three. 
Land on the X, you strike out, you get nothing. Land on BBM, that stands for Bass Baits Monthly. You will win the Bass Baits Monthly box that I showed you just a few minutes ago. Land on the Angel, you get one prize, and you also get to select one person in the comments who gets one prize. If you land on KVD, the world's greatest fisherman, you get a Strike King prize out of the KVD crate. Uh, that's pretty much it. Before I give you the first question, though, um, I sent all the prizes out last week except for Robert Hart. Robert Hart did not send me his address. So if you are on tonight, Robert, I did not get your address, buddy. So I cannot send you your Rick Clun square bill that you won last week. Everyone else, you should already have it or you will be getting it quickly because I think I sent them out first thing Monday. So, let's see, Mr. Bass, what's your thoughts on the Nori's Topwater Baits I sent you? They look sweet, Matthew. Um, yeah, they look really cool. Uh, all right. We'll do one question so we can spend once getting going. And the first question is, name this team. Name this minor league baseball team. First one gets it. Uh, Jeff, I have your email, but the reason I haven't sent it to you is Matthew's first. The Rocket City Trash Pandas. Uh, the reason I haven't sent it to you, Jeff, is uh, the smallest gift card they do is ten dollars. So you're gonna have to win again, and then I'll send you, I'll send you uh, your card. So you're on my list. You will get it. I promise. We just need you to win some more. That's right, the Trash Pandas. This is one of my favorites. The Rocket City Trash Pandas. Man, it has taken forever to get to 4,000 subs. I'm a little less than 300 away. So hopefully, we will be giving away this reel very soon. Okay, Matthew, here is your ticket for the reel drawing. <laughs> I'm going to put that here in the... Tumblr for when I hit 4,000 subscribers. Yeah, how about that? John got beat. But don't count John out. That would be a mistake. That would be a really mistake. Uh, yeah, Booster, this is a repeat. This is a repeat. All right, let, let's, let's spin for Matthew here. One. Okay. Uh, hard bait, miscellaneous, or soft plastics, Matthew. Today's your lucky day, Matthew. You finally got a hat question right. Daniel, I can guarantee you there are no clash in the hard bait bucket. Not even going to pretend. All right, Matthew wants a hard bait. Here we go. Spro Fat John 50. The color is Citrus Nasty. This is a great little crankbait. I got this crankbait from none other than Debo. And although I love the Spro crankbaits, I got a bunch of them, so I decided to put this in the box. So thank you, Debo, <laughs> for contributing 
to the to the cause. Speaking of the cause, I got some cool stuff from a couple of viewers this week I thought I'd share with you guys. This, I think, might be my favorite thing I've gotten in the mail so far. Let me show you this. Got this in the mail to Mr. Bass. Here's my address in case you want to send me something. P.O. Box 1476, Liberty, Missouri, 64069. Send me all of your swim baits. Send me your Bitcoin, whatever you want to send me. I'll take it. <coughs> but check out this letter I got in the mail. Mr. Bass, thank you for the worms and helping us learn to fish. <laughs> Check it out. I sent him some Bama baits, stick baits. He actually won them. Joshua, thanks, dude. Look, there he is fishing. And there's this massive fish he caught. Is that cool or what? And uh, I don't know if this is his brother, Jacob. Jacob. But he sent me something too here. I'm not quite sure what it is. But uh, it's some sort of abstract. It's an abstract rendering of uh, Jacob catching fish, I guess. So to me, that's pretty sweet. That's pretty cool. Thank you very much, Josh and Jacob. That was cool. I love that. Okay, Daniel says he's only three years old. He, he's doing good. You already got him fishing at three. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. That is awesome. All right, then my buddy Daniel Kelly sent me some hand-painted custom lures. And I got to show you these things. Got to show you what he sent me. I'm going to read you his uh, letter here real quick. Mr. Bass, I just wanted to say I'm a big fan of your channel. I hope you enjoy your new custom-painted baits. The swim bait is a first time painted bait for me. I know you love swim baits. All right, so here's the swim bait he painted me. It's a glide bait, seven inches, 2.2 ounces. And he's calling this color Mob Shad. How about that? Dude, that is pretty sweet. I'm digging that color. What do you guys think? Pretty cool, huh? Very nice. Mob Shad. So that's the first one he sent. I'll uh, hang that up there. All right. Then he also sent me, uh, let's see what he says here. Then he sent me a black jerk bait. It's a first as well. You will see reflector gems on the side. So here's the jerk bait. To help with the flash. So he's actually got like these gem stones. He's stuck to the sides of this black jerk bait. To give it more flash. So, black hand painted jerk bait with white eyes. Pretty cool. Let's see. And then, uh, and then he's got a couple others he doesn't tell me about, but he says he does sell some of these as well. Here's, here's a pretty nice, what I would call a modified Fire Tiger square bill. Got a little red going on. 
a little yellow chartreuse. Definitely fire tigery. I like that one. And then he's got a spook. Uh, I really kind of dig this. This is like a, it looks a little more red on the screen, but it's really kind of, in real life, it's much more purple. It's like a blood purple and then a super royal purple on the back. And he's going with that green eye look again. He's done several of these lures with the green eyes. And this is all his first time. To me, it seems like this is hard to do. But I'm not, I'm not a lure painter. All right, he's got two more he sent me. <clears throat> two more square bills. Check this one out. This is a purplish blue with like a, I don't know what you call this pattern, but he's got a pattern all over it. And then he's got kind of like a red spot on the belly, which is kind of cool. Pretty awesome. And finally, <laughs> here's another little crankbait. This one I'm really digging. Got a blue back and then very shad colored natural sides. I like this one a lot as well. I mean, I think this one this is a nice shad pattern. And it's not huge. You can see kind of there. Nice work though. It's a little flat side, dives two to four feet, and you know that's gonna give you a nice little action in the cold water. Right on, right on Gramps, thanks buddy. Appreciate it, man. So thank you to my good buddy, Daniel Kelly, for sending me some awesome custom painted lures. Man, very nice. Very nice. Hey, if you guys have not subscribed to Fishing with Gramps yet, go check him out. He's got a cool channel. I saw a uh, post on Instagram from him today. He caught some lunkers out fishing in his kayak. He's a kayaker too. So pretty sweet. I'm going to, uh, I got to find a place on my wall to hang up uh, Josh's uh, and, and Jacob's deals. Really, really cool. Cool stuff. I admire those guys that like to get creative and paint their own lures, man. You know what? One of the great things about a custom painted lure is nobody else has one. And man, that can give you such a huge advantage sometimes when the fish are finicky. <laughs> now I know my good buddy, Steve says color doesn't matter. <laughs> uh -huh. But that's, that's where Steve and I go different, go separate ways. Uh, because I definitely think color matters. And uh, I would love to have my own custom painted lures at times, but uh, I don't have the equipment or the proclivity necessarily to do it. But I think making your own lures is really cool. And old speaking of Debo, man, you know, he paints a lot of his own lures and he's he's got a pretty good little side gig going. For sure. <laughs> yes, Tim. I think more people need Steve needs to hear that more often. He's wrong. 
<laughs> yeah, Adam, you're making my point right here. I was having poor luck today, changed colors, got fish on three out of four. Uh, yeah. Hey, speaking of custom painting lures, right here, N5KDA, he custom paints lures, and he, he painted some cool lures and sent me, I don't know if I've got any of them up here. This might be one of his. Gary, is this one of your? Nope. This isn't Gary's. This is, uh, I've got Gary's around here as well. He painted some really sick lures. I know, I know, Booster. He only throws black and blue. Hey, Randy. How you doing, man? <clears throat> One thing I can say for Steve is he's got a ton of confidence in black and blue and comfort and 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 I do believe that confidence matters more than anything else in fishing if you really believe in it you got confidence in it you are going to do well with it much better than any other time any other thing Yeah. Speaking of Dave Fritz, uh, Tim, uh, this weekend in my spare time, I've been watching old Bassmaster classic videos. And I watched the one where Dave Fritz won, uh, like in 1992 or three, something like that. That was really fun. Watching those old classics, man, is really, really fun. You can find them on YouTube. If you've never watched them, just go. I mean, the videos quality is terrible and they're kind of hokey and old school, but man, they're still really fun to watch. That was a good year, Simon. Definitely. Right on, James. You're right. I know that. But uh, I guarantee you if uh, my buddy Steve was up here where I live, he'd be throwing a lot of other colors besides just black and blue. For sure. Okay, something else I thought I would share with you guys. <coughs> Lynn Dollar, yeah. He's definitely got, he's, if you want to watch a ton of old bass fishing tournaments, go look this guy up, Lynn Dollar, on YouTube, man. He's got tons of them. Kick your bass. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it, man. Len Dollar. Uh, I'm glad for those guys that saved those videos and put them up because it's fun watching those old school tournaments. <laughs> I do too, Tim. They're just fun to watch. Yeah, so that's a good question. What is your confidence bait? I've seen one person say it's the chatter bait. David says it's the Ned rig for him. Put in the comments. What is your number one go-to confidence bait uh, that you got more confidence than any other technique? Let's see if there's a common theme here or if we're all over the board. What is your number one go-to confidence bait? Uh I would really be interested to see that crankbait or wacky rig, Cinco, and beetle spin, Fisherman 83, a worm. That's pretty cool. Look at Gary. 
Culprit Tequila Shad Worm. You want to talk about specific uh, confidence lure. He even has the brand and the color. Kyle says tube. Kick Your Bass says Wacky Rig or Chatterbait. Illuminathan. Half ounce jackhammer with a hog farmer spunk shad as a trailer. Dude. Jan likes the DOA Cal shads. John, a TK twister. Look at this. I say, what's your one go-to bait? The little bee gives me three. Chatterbait, spinnerbait, and Ned rig. Oh, man. Let's see here. James says big worm. And Matthew's talking the K9. Are you kidding me? A K9 is your confidence bait? Wow. Brian, the man's minus one. That's a crank bait if you didn't know it. That's a good one. Adam says the grub. Matthew is the power wiggler in baby bass or pink brown. Interesting. <laughs> It's funny uh, what gives a person confidence, you know, and and uh, I, I've been surprised at times where a guy says something like, I can't catch a fish on a chatterbait. And I'm thinking, how can you not catch a fish on a chatterbait? <clears throat> Chatterbaits are lights out. Uh, but, you know, until a person catches one with it, it's hard to have confidence in anything. Kyle's liking the swim jig. That's cool. So we got a variety there, definitely a variety of go-to confidence lures. That's fun. Boosters used to be a watermelon red brush hog, baby brush hog. The Berkeley Gulp and Fire Tiger. I've got, I've noticed this in fishing tournaments. You know, I've got several buddies that we fit, used to fish a lot of tournaments together. And like one of my buddies, Joe Lee, he was always throwing a Zoom uh, uh, craw. Uh, that was his go-to bait. And then and what made me think of that is I got another buddy in our group, Mark. His is always a baby brush hog. He's always throwing a baby brush hog. And I got another one, Noel. His is the jerk bait, man. He breaks out that jerk bait every time he can get a chance to. He's just got so much confidence in it. And it's funny. You couldn't get three more different lures. Uh, the speed craw, the brush hog, and the jerk bait. We're all fishing the same lake. They all three go to those separate lures whenever they can. Hey, Dave, how's it going? Matthew, you could go crazy. You could blow up if you started a swim bait channel. <laughs> Hard to argue against a brush hog, Texas Huntsman, man. Brush hogs are amazing. They're, they're still great, great lures that still catch fish. Okay, let's, uh, let's do another name that lure. Um, as I said at the beginning of the show, tonight's theme is going to be trailers. Might be a jig trailer, might be a chatterbait trailer, might be a spinnerbait trailer. So I'll put the trailer on the screen and you tell me the name of the bait not just the company that makes it. You don't really have to tell me the company that makes it. You can if you want, but tell me what it's called. Look at Texas Huntsman, Z-Man Paddletail. I haven't even shown it yet, man. 
<laughs> oh man, we got we got guys throwing out answers before I've even asked the question. You guys are too eager. All right, here we go. Here it is. This is the first trailer. What could it be? What could it be? John Smith. See, I told you John wasn't down. He's got it. It's the Flappin' Hog by Gary Yamamoto. Naturally, you cannot keep John Smith down. He is going to get a question right. Yeah, it's not the Cowboy, Tom. Uh, doesn't look too much different than the Cowboy, but this is the Flappin' Hog by Gary Yamamoto, and this is one of my great favorite colors. Black with SM Red Flake. Congratulations, John Smith. wonder how many tickets John Smith has in the uh, barrel. What do you guys uh, what do you guys think that guy wins almost every week. There you go John, here's another one. A <laughs> Z-Man paddle tail in a Yamamoto bag. Oh man, you're killing me. One for John Smith, and John Smith, of course, is Canadian, so he gets a gift card. I just sent him $25 worth of gift cards last week, and now I owe him another one. In fact, I owe him two because uh, they sent him in different increments. So congratulations, John Smith. You got yourself another $5 gift card. Thanks for playing. <laughs> You're not kidding, Matthew. He's got he's got he's got a treasure trove. It's a flapping hog one, I guess. Uh it's the original. I don't know that they have a flapping hog two. If they do, I don't know. I don't know. But this is one of my favorite lures of all time. I love the flapping hog. You can fish this on its own. You can fish this on a Tokyo rig. You can fish it as a jig trailer. You can fish it as a, on a Carolina rig. You can fish it a thousand different ways. And it is awesome. The flapping hog is awesome. You're right, the little bee. <laughs> we all have a chance now that John's out. <coughs> and John Gill, who wins every single week, I don't think is going to be on tonight because he told me he was going to summer camp or something. Uh, and John Gill's only like 15 years old, so the fact that he beats you guys every week, especially you older guys who have been fishing for probably twice his life, how you let him beat you every week, unbelievable. But that's all right. That's okay. He's not on tonight, so you got a chance. You got a chance. <clears throat> All right. Let's do another one. This is another one of my favorites out there. Dave, we use older stuff. <laughs> well, that's probably true. All right, that one's bent up. I want to get one that's straight, if I can. Adam's already already guessing. 
You know, Adam, if I see your answer ahead of time, I'm just going to have to put the Zacco back. <laughs> uh, I don't have, I'm not using the Zacco this time, by the way. Uh, you might be surprised if I do have man's jelly worms, Texas Huntsman, but I've never used them as a trailer. I'm sure you could. All right. Here it goes. Another. This is another great trailer. And this is old school. Some of you old guys should know what this thing is. This thing's been around a while. David, you got it, buddy. It's the Chigger Craw by Berkeley. This is the three inch version. And this is also one of my favorite colors. Green pumpkin, blue flake. Great trailer. This thing is awesome. And of course, the new one now they've got with the Max Scent. So everybody's saying that Max Scent is the real deal. David Ehlers. There's your ticket for the reel. Put that in the tumbler. And now we can spin. One. We got a lot of ones this time. <laughs> he wants a hard bait. The Dobbins Colt 705 CB rod. Sweet. Uh, all right, let's go with the Jinko Fishing. Uh, CD2 crankbait, square bill. This is Gizzard Shad. Pretty nice. Very, very nice. That is a great crankbait. Okay, so I got my uh, six cent super six sack premium sack, and uh, I never did do a uh, unboxing for this this month. So I thought I might just show you what's in it right now, in case some of you guys were wondering. Um, I'm not sure if this is the actual right package, though, to tell you the truth. Looks like there's too much stuff in this one. Who got the uh, Super Six Sack this month? The premium Super Six Sack. <laughs> Did it come in a green bag? Like this. Did it come in a green bag? This thing has got three packs of hooks. Is that right? Did you guys get three packs of hooks in your uh, Super Six Sack? Three. 
three packs of hooks. Are you kidding me? Am I daydreaming? Have I, am I smoking crack here? What's going on? Three packs of hooks. Wow. You got the four aught offset worm hooks, what I call that. Then you got another pack of four aught offset worm hooks and a pack of wide gap EWG four aught hooks. That is crazy. I have never seen three packs of hooks in one bag. That's off the charts. Then, I'm probably going to have to do a video on this anyway because this is amazing. Then a pack of Divine Swim Baits. This is Sexified Shad, which is a great color, by the way. 3.8 inch. Then a pack of Prawns. Green pumpkin. Yeah, John, you might be right. The hooks may not be selling very well, so they just got tons of them. And then I got four hard baits as well. Can you believe that? I got uh, one of my favorites is the Crush 75X, the Flat Crush, Crush Flat 75X. This is Ghost Pro Shad. Very nice natural color. Prawns with a Z. You're right, Adam. <laughs> uh, the Crush 50S Silent Square Bill. And of course, this is the... This is basically a chartreuse with a black back, but they call it Green Pumpkin Gill. It's basically... The old school go-to black back with a chartreuse side. And then they got a Movement 80 wake bait. Great looking natural perch color, bluegill color. This is called 4K Bluegill. And then the Movement L7 in Threadfin Shad. That also is an excellent color. Crazy how much stuff came in the premium sack this month, man. These dudes, hard to beat these guys, man. I'm telling you, it's hard to beat the six cents boys. Those super six sacks are frigging awesome. You're right, David. They have so many colors, and they are so many great colors. <laughs> Nathan, I know guys who love that Movement X. Just about every crankbait that I love, I like to have a silent version. I like a noisy version and a silent version because uh, not that you can always get silent versions, but if you can, I recommend it because there's sometimes, <coughs> like take the square bill. Everybody down here throws a square bill and almost always they're, they're throwing a noisy square bill, a square bill with rattles. And sometimes the, the fish get conditioned to that noise. And you throw a silent crankbait out there, silent square bill, and a lot of times that surprises them. They're like, what's that? That's not the same thing that everybody else is throwing because it doesn't make any noise. And uh, I believe in silent. I like silent crankbaits. I like noisy ones, but I really like my silence as well.
Yeah, those uh, super sick sacks, man, they're great. Somebody was asking me the other day, what's the best subscription box out there, man? And there's that's hard to answer. There's so many good ones out there. And there's some not so good ones too, but man, the fish tools is great. The Bass Baits Monthly is great. The Sheesh. Super Six Sacks, great. Tell you the truth, the Mystery Tackle Box has been really, really great the last few months. Uh, yeah, I remember those noise. Those that's something I don't believe in, Nathan. That that Livingston lure bait fish sound. I never, I never really <laughs> frog fur, frog fur. That's what that is to me, man. I mean, maybe some of you guys swear by it. I just, I never noticed that Livingston lures caught me anything more than regular lures, to tell you the truth. Yeah, that's my point, Gary. That's exact. You're right. I mean, you're making my point for me. Is uh, silent sometime is the real deal. It's really awesome. So you don't have to go buy a ton of them, man, but at least have a couple of silent crankbaits in your box. And here's another thing. You could start out with a noisy one. If you're catching fish, keep throwing. If they stop biting... Then start throwing the silent and try it. And you'd be amazed at how that will work sometimes. Okay, let's do another name that lure. Name that trailer. <laughs> I'm sore I heard those shiners. It's like the... Uh, squawk box on your boat called the, uh, what do they call that thing? Booster. You're my memory, man. Uh, that little box you can put on your boat and stick the mic speaker in the water and it makes bait fish noises. Um, I got one of those frog fur. I do not think that thing works. I could be wrong, but it goes back to confidence, man. If you don't have any confidence in it, it doesn't matter anyway, does it? Really. And uh, I can't say that I got a ton of confidence in in that. Hydrowave. That's it, Kyle. The Hydrowave. Now, my Hydrowave is the original. Maybe the newest, latest, greatest Hydrowave has figured out how to whisper softly to the bass and lure them in. After Ta Taku just won, maybe... According to him, the hydrowave should be speaking Japanese to the smallmouth. And that's how you get them to bite. So maybe the next version of the hydrowave needs to speak Japanese in the water. And that is how that is how um that is how you will catch them on the hydrowave. Yeah, I know. I just showed the bait, so I'm I'm kind of I'm gonna put it down and put something else up. All right, here it is. All right. Paca is not good enough, Illuminathan. You got to say the Paca Craw. And that's because there's so many Paca things out there. So this is the Paca Craw. It's technically the Paca Chunk, but uh, it looks so much like the Paca Craw, I'm letting it slide. 
but Paca is not enough information, buddy. <laughs> what do you guys think? Should I give this to Nathan? Should I? He just said Paca. Should I give it to him? Texas says, yes, I should definitely give it to him. D says, yes. Dave says, redo. <laughs> All right, I tell you what I'll do. I will, I will, uh, I will give one to both Illuminathan and Fisherman83 just to be safe. All right, so let's spin for uh, let's spin for. All right, what I'm going to do here is uh, spin the wheel for Nathan. Illumin Nathan, this is your spin. Two. All right, now let's do, let's spin for Fisherman 83. So Nathan, you got two. And Fisherman 83, you got one plus one. You can pick somebody. Illuminathan, you tell me what you, what you want. <laughs> what two things do you want, Nathan? And Fisherman eighty three, pick your pick your angel friend. Daniel says he's an angel. All right, Luminathan wants a hard bait and a miscellaneous bait. All right, Fisherman83 wants a hard bait, and he picks Jack and Jaws. Jack and Jaws. All right, Jack and Jaws, you're new, buddy. Do you want a hard bait, saw, a soft plastic, or something out of the miscellaneous bucket? We're waiting on Jack and Jaws to tell us what he wants. Jack and Jaws, you were ninth, buddy. You need to be happy that you got picked. He wants a hard bait. Okay. All right. So now we'll go down the list here. Illuminathan. Here's your ticket. And here's your prizes. The New Tech Elite Blade in black and blue and the Crave Baits uh, Lipless. All right, then Fisherman 83. Here's your ticket. And your hard bait is the Vexen Deep Thud Fat Boy. And this color is Killer Crawdad. That's Fisherman 83. And then Jacking Jaws. Here's your ticket. 
and your hard bait is the Lunker Hunt Shock 2.5F. And this color is called Silver Side. All right. Nice. Congratulations. Nice work. Illuminathan. Let's see, I'm just writing these down so I don't forget who got what. Okay. And Fisherman 83. You've got the Vexen. Beep thud. All right. <clears throat> All right. Cool. What else are we going to talk about? Jack and Jaws, man. He's not gonna he's not going to uh give up, is he? Yeah, so let me set this set the stage here. First on the PACA was Illuminathan. Second was Fisherman 83. Third was Booster C. Texas Huntsman was fourth, but he was totally wrong. Kyle was totally wrong. Jack and Jaws, you were next. Although you didn't say PACA chunk, you said pace chunk. So technically, I could say you were wrong. You said pace chunk. I don't know what paste chunk is, except uh, paste does make some picante sauce. And they do make chunky picante, picante sauce. And then Kick Your Bass had pack craw. I could probably let that go. So you were never there, buddy. You were not even close. But you still got a prize. Thanks to Fisherman83. <laughs> Get over it. Right on. Get over it. Here's the other thing. Sometimes I have to remind you guys of the rules, especially if you don't like uh, what you see. And here's number one rule of the Mr. Bass Spin to Win show. I am the authority. I decide who wins. I assure you, I got no skin in the game. I'm being as fair as possible. So don't get all pissy on me if you want to keep playing the game. I'm not either, Dave. <laughs> uh, I'm not either. Right on, Texas Huntsman. Stay in your lane and you'll have a good time. Stay in your lane. That's what it's all about. Right. Life is cruel and so is a Mr. Bass spin to win game. All right, Brian. Great question. Let's do that one now. Everybody, what's your least confident bait. What bait do you just say? Oh, crap. I cannot catch anything with that. Or another way to say it is what bait do you absolutely hate to fish with? What's your least, least favorite? Your least confidence bait? Good question, Brian. Let's see it, man. 
least confident swim jig big wake baits spinner bait wow that surprises me wake bait giant swim bait ned rig sissy bait bed rig i think he means ned rig crank bait jerk bait i definitely get jerk bait that takes a lot of practice to get good at that Ned rig. You know, my buddy Joe hated the Ned rig and he just kept fishing with it and started catching them. And now he really likes it. <coughs> Adam doesn't like the chatterbait. How about that? No confidence. A lot of you guys say Ned rig. That's interesting. Hey, glad to have you, Tom. Thanks for hopping on. Spinner. There's another spinner bait. Jan's saying spinner bait. Cinco. Matthew says Cinco. Wow. And Brian says rubber worms. Caught one. Okay, Brian. My buddy Dean, every time we went fishing, would say, I hate worms. I hate worms. I can't ever catch a fish on a worm. <laughs> oh, fish like a girl. That's a funny one. That's funny. We were talking about that on Steve's show. But Dean, in desperation one day, started fishing a worm, and he started slaying them. And now, we were fishing last weekend. I turned around. He's fishing a worm for fun. He's really gained a lot of confidence on the worm, and he's becoming a pretty good worm fisherman. So don't give up on the worm. Brody says frog. Now, to tell you the truth, that doesn't surprise me as much as you might think, because frogs are fun, but they do take some practice. And uh, you can miss a lot of fish on a frog if you're not careful. So that's that's not a bad one. I get that one. The spinner bait throws me for a loop, Gary. Interesting. Ah, Nathan, any ducket bait. <laughs> uh There's a great video out there. Ned Cady himself talks about how to fish the Ned rig. He's the one that invented it with a buddy of his. And he talks about six different retrieves to make the Ned rig effective. It's a great video. I recommend you go watch it. Deep cranking, anything with a fairy wand. That's a spinning rod, by the way, if you don't know what a fairy wand is. That's just a trick, the trade trade name from some guys. Uh, Livingston noise baits. <laughs> oh, man. <coughs> <coughs> Fish in the southeast. What's up? Well, Tom, I think you're right. There's a lot of people who don't throw spinner baits anymore, and I'm telling you, you should still throw them. Um, perfect example of this. I think I talked about this the other day on the other show. I went out fishing with Dean, and we both started with a chatter bait. We both love chatter baits. We love throwing them. And we were catching them really good on the chatterbait. And then after about two hours, I thought, you know, all the conditions here look great for a spinnerbait. And even though the chatterbait's working well, I just wonder. I broke out that spinnerbait, man, and two to one, it was out fishing the chatterbait like you wouldn't believe. And, uh, Spinnerbait is just a fantastic lure. And I think the fact that a lot of guys are not throwing spinnerbaits now it just makes it better for you. Heck yeah, War Eagle. Spinnerbaits are great. So Gary says they still throw a ton of spinner baits where he's at. 
I gotta say, man, I still love me a spinner bait bite, man. Great, great stuff. All right, somebody said too many craws, so I need to pick a, I need to pick a trailer here that is not a craw to make that person happy. So I'm going to throw something that technically is not a craw. Here you go. This is technically not a craw. What is it? <clears throat> Name that bait. Jeff. Jeff got it. He's first. It's the sweet beaver. But since I let Nathan get away with Packa, I'm letting Jeff get beaver. It is the Reaction Innovation Sweet Beaver, technically. Here is the package if you want to see what it looks like. Check out that color. Fried watermelon. Dude, what an awesome color. Is that not a great color? It's basically a watermelon with red flake, but then it's got this red tail, red tip tail. Fried watermelon. I love the name of that color. Whoever thought of that, I think is pretty dang cool. So, Jeff Lauer. Another one of our Canadian buddies. Gets to spin to win. Let's see if Jeff can win the Bass Baits monthly box. Whoa! So close. All right. He got two gift cards, though. Congratulations, Jeff. Nice work. Speaking of the beaver, listen, guys. If you're not if you're not fishing with a beaver, you need to be. This is a lure that needs to be in your tackle box. Seriously, it's amazing. It does a million different things. Makes a great trailer. It's a great flipping bait if you just want to flip and pitch it by itself. It's it's a it's a it's. It's an awesome lure. It's just fantastic. Yeah, the beaver and the dippers, man. You're right, Adam. Those skinny dippers and little dippers are superb. I like their man bear pig, too. And I'll tell you what else I like. Their pocket rocket. That pocket rocket is an excellent worm. Maybe that's what I'll do is do a uh, Reaction Innovations uh, theme here in the near future. That'd be fun. Man, I love their stuff. I love their products. Great, great stuff. Big DD in the house. Yeah, the bait names are something. Their color names are amazing, Jan, as well. Crazy. Tramp, Stamp, they got a lot of different crazy colors. You're right, Dave. That's the way I fish them. Wacky rigging those pocket rockets. Very, very good stuff. Very good stuff. <laughs> I 
Okay, fish in the southeast. The way the spin to win works is I ask a question or we'll do this game where I'll say name this bait. I'm not doing this one tonight because I blew it. I accidentally showed this, but I might show, show this up and say name this bait. This is the Rage Menace. Whoever puts Rage Menace in the comments first would win a chance to spin the wheel. And then you spin the wheel, and depending upon what you land on, determines what kind of prizes you will win. So that's kind of how the game works. If you know anything about fishing and fishing tackle and baits, it's not that hard. If you don't know anything, well, then it's hard. It's very hard. <laughs> uh, and that's why I throw a baseball question in. I usually throw a baseball question in every night. Name that minor league baseball team. In case you know nothing about fishing, maybe you'll know the name of the team. His Z-Man in Canada pronounced Z-Man. <laughs> it probably is. In, in uh, England, too. They say Z over there instead of Z. Some Mr. Bass trivia. I do that, too. I haven't done it in a while, but uh, I will do it again. In fact, next week, I will do Mr. Bass trivia instead of name that bait. How's that? Don't forget to join us on our Wednesday night show. Me and Get Your Fish On, Steve Chapman, do a show every Wednesday night, same time, 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern. And uh, that's always a good time. Although all of our guests keep backing out. <clears throat> but we still have a good time anyway. And uh, appreciate everybody hopping on tonight. We're about to wrap her up here. We'll do one more name that <clears throat> name that lure. This one I think is going to be hard for most of you. But I like to throw a hard one in there every now and then. Yes, Fishing the South. Those are original. I got a lot more than that, too, by the way. Pre-Rapala. All right, here we go. Last question. Last name that bait for the night. Here you go. What is that? Dude. Who is going to get this one right? <clears throat> All right, Daniel Hedrick, you are first up. James was second. It's the Versa Craw. I thought this would be harder. I think most of you don't know what this is, though. This is made by Jewel Bates, my fish tool box, guys. And the Versa Craw is a great, very versatile crawdad. It's pretty awesome. This color is awesome too, man. This is an excellent color. They call it Bass Whacker. Excellent, excellent lure. They come in three different sizes. They've got the peewee, the junior, and the regular size. Yeah, it's a Rage Menace plus a Chigger Craw. It's very versatile. That's why they call it the Versa Craw. 
One, Daniel Hedrick. Pick your poison. I need to do you a ticket while I'm thinking about it. Here's your ticket, Daniel. He wants miscellaneous. All right, miscellaneous it is. The green fish tackle. Double buzz bait. How about that? I bet you don't have one of those, Daniel Hedrick. Uh, Daniel, I use a lot of their jewel jigs, but my favorite is the Pro Spider Jig. Ah, <laughs> tear apart doll behind me. Yeah, check this out. The Frustrated Fisherman's Tear Apart Doll. <laughs> Rip off his head, arms, legs, or all of the above to relieve stress. Then Velcro him back together until the next big one gets away. Look how ticked off his face is. This is a mad old man. This is how you can see here how his body parts, you can tear them all apart. The frustrated fisherman's tear apart stress doll. Heck yeah! <laughs> Yeah, one of my buddies found that at an auction and bought it for me. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yes, Daniel, the Pro uh, Spider Jig has a wire weed guard. I love the wire weed guard. Most people don't like wire weed guards. I like it a lot. Pretty fun. Pretty cool. All right. We are done. That was the fastest two hours in fishing show history. That thing went by fast, fast, fast. Hey, thanks everybody for hopping on. Please smash that like button. Share the video. I would greatly appreciate it. As soon as we get to 4,000 subscribers, we will be giving away the KVD smoke. We're only a few hundred subs away. Share the video. See if we can get those sub numbers up. I would greatly appreciate that. <clears throat> and I'm itching to give away that reel. Hope you guys have a great week. Hope to see you Wednesday night on the Mr. Bass Get Your Fish On podcast show. Thanks, everybody, for joining in and participating. And we will see you Wednesday night. Until then.